but with Energy Star glass, which would be double insulated glass, and the look of the original old window, along with the keeper right here, which if you recall, some of the older windows, some of the older windows have this French style keeper. And what's unique with Marvin is all wood. Everything's wood to the interior. Wood, this would be your jam liner here. They call it a concealed jam liner. And this is to be painted or stained. And what, what the Wilsons want to do is have it pre-finished white to the interior. Okay. Again, so for the board's edification, this is an application we uh, approved last uh, meeting and uh, she wanted a, uh, an aluminum clad and we said wood or fiberglass and so now she's coming back she still wants the window that she originally proposed the wood with the correct right. and the difference between the one that's already been approved is that's a fiberglass frame and a fiberglass exterior this is an all wood frame with an extruded aluminum exterior much more wood to the interior than the fiberglass one. More so for an old, authentic <clears throat> look. Is there a difference in thickness uh, versus the wood versus the, uh, with the wood versus the Fibrex for the? Uh, fiberglass, pull through with ultra, it's not Fibrex. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, is there a difference in the thickness of the jam? Correct. This would be narrow for the one you've already approved, about half the width of that. Okay. What about the concealers? They do not have concealed jam liners on the one that's already been approved. That's a, a vinyl jam liner. These are a wood jam okay. liner. So this is an upscale to what they've already approved. Right, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, one option we also have, I just want to put this on the board's table, is uh, if we want to, we don't have to approve it at this meeting. We can wait till next meeting and in the meantime go to the showroom, look at the windows side by side, maybe stop by the house first mm -hmm. so that we can get a better in place idea but okay can, can you just turn it around yeah. Yeah, there's like other point, there's other points i want to go over too because they have grids in this proposal mm -hmm. the crossbars yep okay the exterior is exactly the same profile as the one that's already been approved the pole truded altrex exterior but this is aluminum clad about the thickness of a quarter Okay. We need to have it on like a lazy suit. Yeah. 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 That's one thing I want to put down there because I'm ready to scratch it. Thank you. Thanks. Why don't we uh, put it on this? There you go. Then I can spin it around a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, and you can move the. Okay. Because there's a couple of things that still have to go over. That's good. Okay. There we go. So, what's already been approved to the exterior is this profile. You keep in mind, this is an insert. You put it inside your existing window. Mm -hmm. The profile on the exterior is exactly the same, except for the rail bars that you see here. They're substantially wider, and that's more of the old authentic look to the old windows. Mm -hmm. So from the curb, from the curb appeal, this sits inside the frame. This is a three-quarter pocket here. That's what we have on our old window, the three-quarter pocket. So this goes inside. So to the exterior, you're looking at this. And up in our climate, that's why we go to the extruded aluminum cladding. And the simulated divided light bars, which is the most important thing here. And those are exterior models, you said. These are, I'm going to show you. This is a bottom sash of that window there. Right. These are, they're called simulated divided light. Right. Yep. 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 Right. They're permanently fixed on the right. exterior, permanently fixed on the interior. They're seven eighths of an inch thick. And to have this look, we're trying to simulate the authentic divided light bars. But to do that with an insulated glass, they would have to be quite large, about sure. twice as thick as this. So what we're proposing is going with these simulated divided light bars, which are permanently fixed outside or inside and permanently fixed outside with the 7 8 extruded aluminum. They, they have a 6 over 6 pattern that they're proposing. Mm -hmm. 
So from the curve, this is going to be light. These would be 7 eighths of an inch thick, a 6 over 6. And that's going to be a beautiful look for the curve appeal. To simulate the original mm -hmm. mutton bars that we paint that are single pane, they have no energy efficiency to the homeowner at all. The, did the did we get a window survey on this? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yes. Four windows well, or yes. Yeah. Dan's yeah. got it. Yeah, I just wanted to. And part of that issue was that these were replacement windows. Right. right. Anyhow. Right. That made the window survey <coughs> right. a little uh, mute. It's simply a survey that, right. uh, relative to replacement windows. Right. And and really the the issue is that this is a contributing structure in a district. We have never approved either vinyl or aluminum clad windows. Right. And a contributing this situation. That's We've done so on an addition once, and we did so at the direction of the Planning Commission once on that house on Windsor. Yeah, but you're correct. essentially correct. Absolutely. So there were three. three We've had a few approved in the city. Two in particular jobs, but they were additions, right. not full jobs, not right. full replacements. Right, right. right. Again, the glass, we, we have to get Energy Star glass, which we always did go to the chief, on mm -hmm. .2 AU value. Yeah with the SDL drive. Right. Another thing I did not point out, and you're probably aware, with the simulated divided light bar, they are available and we quoted it with the spacer bar. The spacer bar is in between the glass and it sits right in between the right. two interior and exterior blades. It gives a, a shadow line effect. Mm -hmm. So you're right. really looking at, you know, is that a true divided light? Right. No, that's the premier window. Of this type, no question about it. Absolutely. No question yeah. about it. Well, I'd like no, to ask. No question about the marble. No question about the quality of the window. Kate, do you want to review the previous uh, approvals for aluminum? Just for everyone's. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we, there has been um, in the residential um, setting uh, a number of. Of approvals, one was four, uh, 416 Sedgwick Drive, which was the uh, sun porch right. casements. Right. I don't know if you all remember those. The it was a rare windows. edition sun porch casement, yeah. right? So, um, and then, as Don was saying, 716 Windsor Place, which were a double hung sash throughout the house. We did go and take a look, or at least I know I did. I did go to the showroom to Ryan. I believe sure. it was one of your jobs yeah. to to go and take a look at the at the windows um, uh, uh, before they. Before and we did they not approve that originally, and it was in front of the planning commission, and the planning commission ordered overrode us to go back yeah. and yeah. overrode us. Um, and then, uh, and then there was one at one sixteen Wendell Terrace, which was a non contributing non contributing non contributing non -contributing house. So, so what I would su suggest yeah, is um, uh, we can get we can leave it to Kate, or we can get a couple of board members, and that'd probably be a good idea. And go look at the house for sure, and then go right over to the showroom and look at the two windows oh, because I think well, I, I think I, I would like to see the difference side side between the. Because I think what the, the applicant's two. position is, and I think we need to be open, is that this product, from a visual point of view, looks more authentic, more original mm -hmm. than what we've approved. So, uh, and given the fact that it's already replacing replacement windows, I think we deserve to take a look. Yeah. That would well, be my suggestion any, to the board. Any oh. thought on the narrowing of the glazing? <coughs> for the I'd like to see suit? exactly what it is. Okay. Personally, I'd like to see. Yeah. It. And I think you're, <coughs> Don, you said it clearly. This one meets the um, visible light or the glass light. Um, I'm not saying that right. What's the term? Uh, glazing? No, just the amount of daylight. In other words, the glass daylight area. Opening. The daylight opening. Yeah. 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 And that this matches more the, the original windows and the protruded fiberglass right. becomes narrow because it's stronger and so on. So there will be a difference where it'll look thinner and it'll look different than the original. Well, this the, is more authentic. So I mean so that's the that really is the question is is the you know for example the uh, the ra rail or the yeah. rails yeah. on would be exactly the same. Right. But the rails styles the rails would be this height on which correct. Right. Thicker uh, I'm uh, in comparison to the originals. Will these rails and styles be thicker? Yeah, well, what's in the house is not original. <coughs> well, 
actually but, what but there's what a lot of six now. over sixes all over the place. They, they designed Marvin designed this window to match this yeah. old wood window with yeah. the wide rails, so they right. would match an old right. 1920s. Right, right. which is where we're after. If you'd like to measure mine, we can. Yeah, no. <laughs> we can come and me <laughs> right. we can come and measure your. That's their whole idea. They try to match So if that's okay with the board, we'll set something up, and Kate will call around, yeah, and we'll get a couple people. Work. Okay, I'll come next week. Yeah. I'm going to leave this package. Perfect. 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 I've lived Perfect. at your shop before. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, it's going to be like great. Like yeah. Okay, thank you so much for coming down. Yeah, we really appreciate, appreciate it. The information. And you do have uh, full scale windows of both in the show. Yeah. Okay. okay. Absolutely. And, that's, and I think that's what we need to, and uh, you know, for, for the board, as we're working with window replacements, the technology is getting better and um, to be able to. Uh, compare those those windows side by side given what there is yeah. I think that that think would be really helpful to, to be able to do that okay we'll do yeah, okay, Mr. Ryan thank, thank you, so you very very much coming. and I think the only, yeah. the only other thing I might add is that you know the nature of window development and your products and like this is a Cadillac of its line I think in yeah. general without going to a more custom made the issue that we struggle with as you know in historic districts is 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 material and character and this specific dimensions so we understand this presentation from the uh, from the applicant from the uh, uh, but we wanted you and we appreciate the help of window manufacturers and suppliers like yourself to understand the historic condition context so that you can assist us in that there are other issues aside just from the rails there's obviously the material issue and sometimes it's contextual uh, who here knows what the replacement windows for the hotel were did we? Didn't? Didn't? Do you have a commercial to, application? Well, in, in, it's all right. It's all right. I'm just saying. I. In, I believe that they that was an aluminum clad. We've uh, certainly was. approved it aluminum was. clad yeah. in. That's a Marvin window. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. It's the big. The big ones are fantastic yeah. up top. Yeah. yeah. My point. Big money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. what I thought. So what right. my my point here is that. <coughs> Is that we 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 don't have a moving target. We have specific targets for different districts and uses, as done just uh, do out in front of me. That was a commercial project, you know. Switch yeah. the coin over. So that dialogue, and we appreciate your assistance there yeah, with absolutely. your clients, with your clients who come in and ask those questions, so they can be informed well, uh, collectively. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. We have to keep the old homes. Yeah. yeah. And we yeah. have right. to keep the integrity of the right. old homes. But well, we have to keep the energy. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It's right. a huge issue, and it will it's be. It's a huge issue. Yeah. Tough Windows are the, oh, it's the toughest thing. Well, we want it to be exactly like it is, but it's the window manufacturer company to try to come up right. with an energy efficient product right. Right. that gives us that historical work. Right. That would be what All right. Thanks for your Terrific. support on that. We Thank you so much. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank okay. You. I, I will see uh, you next week. Yes, we'll Cynthia? Do. We'll do. Um, Remember when we had someone come from the SHPO to do training with us mm -hmm. a number of years ago? Right. Was he saying that the SHPO now does approve aluminum clad in residential applications? So. Yes. SHPO yes. has, and uh, of course it's up to the local right. to make their final decision. And SHPO's direction, not SHPO, the National Park Service direction, more and more is going to so I'll try to say this correctly, a little less material generated versus appearance yeah. generated. That's what oh, I thought. I thought I, it was to replicate the look right. rather right. than the material. That is of greater concern to the National Park Service than it is, than material. Yeah, from the street, so, we want it to look correct. Yeah, and, and I'll get to this uh, before we adjourn, but one of my uh, 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 directives today is going to be to have Kate uh, schedule a mandatory training, which we have to do by ordinance. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I would like to do is to do something for a half a day, because I think there's multiple issues we need to deal with, and we've okay. got the resources to go get them. Mm -hmm. And Windows is there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that I have those windows in my new edition. They're and great I, windows. I hate them. You hate them. <laughs> and the reason why I hate them is that interior spacer <clears throat> catches my eye every time I walk <clears throat> into the room. And I wish that I had not asked for 
It's, it's an addition. I wish I had done just one over ones. Okay. Because every time I look at that six over one, I see that it is. It's spacer. Yes. Well, we might share that with the Do you client. see the, the center spacer? Yes, the yeah. metal center Because sometimes spacer. they leave that out. Sometimes <coughs> yeah. you can leave it out. Yeah, you can leave it out. Yeah. And, and would, it, would it be better? I mean, if. Well, if they do it for a shadow. That's what yeah. they do. If, yeah. they did, if they didn't have that spacer, would that. Well, I can't quite picture what it would look like without, without the spacer. The spacer. But, it actually looks but I, I would not have had, <laughs> yeah. if I had known crazy. what it looked like in place, yeah. I would have said, give me one over one. So yeah. mm -hmm. Well, that's, uh, the rest of the house is six uh, over. Kate will get to us and we'll get a couple of people from the board yeah. and like we'll go take a week. look at the showroom. So, the one thing I'll be out of town next is, week. Is worthy of mention is once you permit yep. either vinyl or aluminum clad, right. the next logical step from an applicant is an aluminum window period. Correct. A lot of them out there, and they can right. all talk the same kind of dimensions right. and the same kind of light. But we're, then we're, we've gone over the bridge. Right. Right. No. It'll. It'll. Well, it'll be a procedural change. Yeah. Uh, if in fact we allow this, then you got to allow it. Well, you know. I don't know if you do. Well, you this got to, but you got to be aware. Of this it. this particular one is a little different because it's a replacement well, of replacement. Well, actually, and we're talking about what six windows or no twenty six windows. Twenty six windows. Oh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, windows. Yeah. No, actually. So, but Dan's you, point is well yeah. taken, and this is what so we'll have to talk about. This is yeah, they are about. actually the original windows. If you remember, they're the original windows, but they were they were shaved down yeah. to put the, the sash liners in, yeah. Yeah. and now they're inoperable. And um, well, so that I we think can we should go and get. I uh, think the we should look at the dimensions. house. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have been inside the house. Okay, but and I, I think photographs, whoever so. goes to the showroom should also go yeah. to the house first. Yep. Kate, I would just okay. add for the survey that we should check every one that is not functional since they are the original windows. Okay. Uh, they were all uh, shaved. I, don't know. I know they were all shaved. Right. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's continue on. Uh, new business. Project site review. 500 Erie Boulevard East. The Old Smith's Restaurant Supply. Is that what you're here for, sir? Yep, absolutely. Come on up. Give us your name and address. And again, for the board's edification, uh, this is a zoning referral. Project site review. And our jurisdiction is comment. Okay. Welcome. Thanks. Uh, also, the developer of the Deets. Yes. The Deets building. Yes, 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 yes. So. I did the uh, Deets building uh, over Park Avenue. I just uh, did a second historic preservation project out of Binghamton at the old Ansco Camera Factory. Yep. So, Las Vegas, this is uh, my third endeavor. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, can you just kind of go through the project, the scope of the project, and what we're most concerned about is talking about the exterior? Mm -hmm. uh, floor plans, that kinds of things, that's not really... Yeah, so I mean, the higher level, I mean, this building is historic for, uh, for a lot of reasons. It's, it's the building that, uh, that has survived a lot of different uh, changes throughout our society. Right? It was built for the Canal as a warehouse building. Um, it survived the canal, it survived the, uh, the building of the viaduct, and uh, hopefully it survived the demolition of the viaduct. Um, <laughs> both my personal opinions, but, um, you know, this is... This is a great building. Um, it's been occupied by the, the Smith Restaurant Supply from the you know, 60s, 70s. Um, it's also historic, uh, historically significant for its. Uh, it was the original home of the Porter Cable Manufacturing. Right. From before right. it moved out to so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, there's, it's, uh, I worked with uh, Onondaga Historical Association about Syria, did a bunch of research. A lot of cool uses here. Uh, Barnes Cycling Company was here. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot more to the story that's great. I think from the exterior standpoint, you have two different buildings, right? You have a, a three-story wood-framed building, and then you have a six-story masonry building that have always been two separate buildings uh, that were later connected uh, when one of the Smith family uh, uh, family members purchased the building and connected the two. Smith Restaurant Supply is always operating generally out of the, the, the first and second floor of the, you know, what is the, the three-story building mm -hmm. on the western portion of, of the lot. And the third story has never really been improved, so it's kind of always been this sort of Erie Canal warehousing type structure. The, the six-story building has had different uses. I think most, Excuse me. <laughs> most, most recently is probably a Patrick's dry cleaning use. Uh, on the what would be the north wow. east part, and the cool picture of OHA found yeah. of uh, one of the original Patrick's dry cleaning places. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that that, that building is uh, you know 
both buildings are built very well. Um, from the outside, the, the six-story building is is pretty much intact. Uh, the three-story building has had several modifications, as anybody who walks on the north, especially on the Towson Street elevation. Um, Smith has, over the years, sort of you know modified window openings. Right. Um, you know, they moved the staircases inside the building to accommodate their uses. There's been a di different uh, modifications throughout there. I, sure. I think the, the, the thought process here was that we're, we're still going through, um, you know, the part one, part two exercise. We've had uh, Julian Adams and uh, a team of people from um, SHPO come down and look at this as part of uh, sort of identifying those historic elements. Our, our thought was, you know, the, the period of significance, there's two periods of significance. Um, you know, really the, the original significance, what it was built for, the port of cable manufacturing, and then sort of the Smith restaurant supply, which we're going to say started in the you know, late 50s or the 60s, and then went until we're trying to determine what their zenith would be, um, yeah, which is you know, a difficult conversation. But right. I, I think our focus was to, to kind of look at it and, and restore the building back to that condition. So what you'll see here is uh, we have some uh, historical photos that support, you know, the, the restoration, the facade, the window openings, the, the storefronts on the first floor, what you see on Towson, what you see on Water Street, um, you know, maintaining the appendages that were built over time on north elevations. Uh, one of those has the Heimlich Coffee Shop posters in it today. The other part was, was the Patrick's dry cleaning piece that I spoke about. I believe it was a bar at one point. Uh, so, so, this is a, it's a beautiful building. Our intent was to, to really work, you know, from an inspirational standpoint, the building's a fantastic building. It's a great story about our, our community, the resiliency. I, I also love the fact that it's on the Black Empire Bike Trail, which will be Water Street. So, you know, we're trying to, from a from an exterior perspective, uh, make sure we invest into that to, to make sure that our, our hardscapes, if you will, um, really come out well on the Water Street side. but. You know, bring that building back to that 19, late, late 1950s, early 1960s uh, era where you have the window openings that were intended to be there. Um, the six-story building will be really, that's, that's a window replacement. I think all of these are window replacements. There's only a handful of windows that are left to go to three or four. Um, but it's identifying those windows and, and putting together the right product. Um, we haven't identified a window or a contract with a window vendor yet. Um, and a gentleman here, Marvin is a, is a great candidate right. for this, and then the, um, the Eagle window, which is a window we use the these building too. I think um, I, either one of those two would be a good fit. They both have products for, for this window, but these are beautiful windows. Uh, you know, tall, thin windows yep. that, uh, that, that rest very close to the ceiling. Uh, that will be tremendous. But otherwise, it, it's really just trying to take this back to where it is. I mean, this, this site is, uh, I'm sure everyone's always, you know, seen it and familiar with it. It's always been um, restrictive from the standpoint that the building occupies off the site. There's a little parallelogram on the east side that you know butts up against the viaduct, but um, you have the building actually coming across the property line in some cases, especially the six-story building. Um, so the, the, the real intent would you know, have, do a great historic preservation project to, to bring the, the three-story, the six-story buildings back to their original conditions. That would include, from a perspective, uh, made some new work to uh, bring back the window openings to their original openings. Replacing those windows with historically approved in accordance with the historic preservation requirements from the State Historic Preservation Office and National Park System. Um, restoring this historic facade, which would be including repainting the facade. From Is the that red. what you intend to do? Yeah. Paint. Mm -hmm. That's about all you can do. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and I think it's important too to try and. Um, the, the red paint, we haven't, we haven't found any evidence uh, that that is in the period of significance. Uh, the photos that we have, the, the, the uh, VIP is the architect on this with uh, Capitol Freeman. Right. Yeah, they've gone through and take paint samples. They found it to be more of a beige color, which I think is yeah. in your package. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the three-story building is a slightly different color than the six-story building. Yeah. And that's your intention to maintain? Yes, to keep the differences between the buildings. So you have a... a, a I think that it should be a, a color material selection in the back of the yep. elevation. Yep. Uh, you can see those references there. But yeah, I mean, of the same color family. These colors aren't representative. As a, no. as a color copy, that's the problem. Yeah. T tell me, do you have a good chunk of the paint sample off of the original buildings? 
to, to see how far back the colors go, just for your own use and all, your own edification. Yeah. Are you using tax credits, I presume? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. So I'm just saying you ought to get a good record just for your coffers and for your information and then make your decisions. So somewhere, find a piece that goes right back to the raw brick, uh, especially on the three-story building, I think. And uh, it's just a suggestion. That's no, all absolutely. No, we yep. did. We did. Okay. Um, we don't have to see it now. I don't have to see it. Okay. It's just part of your process of what you'll be submitting, the verification. Yeah, there's a couple different layers on it. There's, yeah, there's I'm sure. A lot more layers than expected. Yeah, I'm sure. There always are. <laughs> but it's, yeah, so that, that was to, and, and that was one of the times. So I, I think from an existing building standpoint, it's trying to, you know, do a great historic preservation project on, on what was there. Yeah. Um, I think the other consideration here is the expansion. So yes. one of the challenges with this site is you have a three-story building, a six-story building, very similar to what pipe, a VIP did pipe block. We have different levels of buildings. Um, one of the limiting factors here to try to maximize not only the square footage, but being code and having vertical transportation that actually operates, uh, was, was trying to make the vertical transportation work on the outside of the six-story building so that it could work for the, the, the three-story building and the six-story building in a way that was uh, ooh, more common sense from an operations thing, to be quite, quite honest, versus mm -hmm. putting two different uh, infrastructures uh, in, in both buildings like they're two different buildings. So that was that was a big part of the conversation. Um, the historic folks are looking at some other buildings. They, they stopped by here. Uh, this, is, this is the State Street Preservation Office. Uh, we had some conversations about what that expansion would be. The original intent behind it was there's that great, um, you know, Smith Restaurant Supply sign sign there, right? Yeah. It's a sign, but for all intent purposes, they're gone. So right. if I look at it as the, the restoration of the facade, they try to preserve that facade. So we were looking at it in a way, our original takeoffs were trying to do, this is affordable housing projects. Yep. Right. Right. Uh, so there's, there's, a, there's a budget that we have to meet, but we wanted to make sure that you could see that from the highway. Right. We thought that would be a pretty cool thing if, if that vertical transportation could be Put the stair on that wall and, and have glass that you could see through. Uh, that was not really liked or approved by some of the historic preservation office when they came through. They wanted to see it distinguished more as a, a separate building with a similar, not not the same, a similar window rhythm as the six-story building, which is why you see the the, the glass in sort right. of the capacity that it is, um, with you know consistent sizes but differentiated enough where there was a, enough of a setback. And a different building material uh, that would sort of differentiate it as a third building, which was there. That was, that was the thought process. So, the, when you speak to this edition, you're just talking about the stairwell elevator well yeah. edition. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Thank you. Um, that, that obviously is the um, new element in the project. Jeff, there we go. And uh, <laughs> I thought you were with your grandchildren for the next five hours. That's why I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> really, I can't do six. <laughs> So that obviously is um, the major kind of new element that has to be, and it always starts from conceptual. How how different, uh, you know, the, how different, how similar should it be? And we'll leave that to you at this point. Um, I think um, I th I think that that portion of your submission is the one that I look at and just need to have more understanding of what uh, probably would be more clarity in the drawing representation of what those glass facades look like. I do believe. Um, Oh, tell me, do you have any backup on the signage that you're showing, the naming signage on the three-story building? Do you have old photographs showing uh, something, a Smith Restaurant? Did I miss those? If I did, I apologize. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. So okay. this is, there's a couple of them. They're, they're stapled all around. I only have one copy of Pause. So no, no, it's okay. Them. We can pass it. Thank you. That's, That's exactly cool. what I was looking for. Yeah. yeah. And you can see just some different variations over right. time that OHA pulled through. Great place. Great picture. Canal. They're on both sides, too, if you want there's a great one. Patrick's the six-story building is a, a pretty cool one. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so regarding the addition, that's going to be the one that is um, the biggest question. And it takes a great deal of kind of subtlety and skill to do that well. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to screw it up. No, you, you don't. don't. And I think What's that the, 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 the less the attention system. to it as an existing system. the less attention to it as a unique element and the more it is secondary to your existing construction secondary but obviously clearly an addition uh, that's that's the kind of important balance that historic preservation is most successful uh, in other words not a statement of, of, of a new element 
Certainly a stairwell is also so supportive in function that it has to die back. It, you know, so that's the area that I'm going to be you know, looking at as the most difficult part of the project in many ways. I, I agree yeah, with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And, and that always is the case in an architectural studio as well. How do you, how do, you do it? How do you do an element? Uh, they'd be good to use some good case studies and really look for an example that shows a very subtle but strong addition. It may be so minimal in its use of windows and, mat and, and materials and even color uh, that it just has this harmon harmony with your two existing buildings. Yeah. Well, you see some of the, the, the ones that um, St. Patrick's, local, St. Patrick's, you know, what, what we have done locally sometimes has been the more cost-effective approach, which is, which is approved, yeah, right? Sure. It's, a, Makes sense. it's a concrete masonry product, yep. it's a CMU block system. Uh, you know, St. Patrick's is great because on the old St. Patrick's school, you know, they had uh, they had a very similar St. Patrick's signage, you know, uh -huh. um, there. And, you know, it's, I mean, the project's a great project, not to take away from it. Just, yeah. we're trying to do something, this is a little bit more high profile location, too, yeah. I think. Yeah. That has got, we're, we're trying to do it well. And I, sure. I think you're, sure. you're balancing, um, you wish you could spend all the money, I think if you could spend more money on this little expansion, even though it's more operational in nature, I think it's going to be important. I think if you look at our plans, that's where we are spending money. That in, in, in a lot of Water Street. You mean the addition? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you, you got to get it right. I mean, we're, yeah. You don't want to screw it up in a way that takes away from the other buildings. You want to do it in a thoughtful way. Uh, to answer your question too, I mean, I think a couple of years ago um, was it the Huntington Library out in uh, Long Island that got the Historic Preservation Award. Yeah. They did expand. They did beautiful. You know, there, there's been very tasteful ways of like we have a ton of style buildings that are, are brought back and expanded. Um, you know, I've, I've looked at those as, as inspiration of the Tangle Gardens, like even the design there, but like I think a lot of those are a lot more glazing than we're going to be allowed. Yeah. Um, right. Or might even be functional here in certain cases. Yeah, energy wise and everything else. Yeah. So I, I think it's, it's trying to find that right balance. Of, you know, the, the product on the outside here was a <clears throat> product um, that. I'm a German-based company. Uh, it hasn't been used here locally, but it's a you know more of a masonry-style product that would that would be sort of block panels out of. Uh, and where would this go? This, this would be this would be in the gray area. Yeah, these gray areas around the windows. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah here. Yeah. yeah. Here. Right. Not here. Right. So this that's, would that's just be painted. painted. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now again, you're in for discussion phase here, which we appreciate, by the way, and it's the best time to just talk about these kinds of issues. Um, I would highly recommend you look at the most, the most yes, I'm, I'm a German department or some, or, or. I only know I slide dry. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. Well, I'll keep you moving margin. Uh, <laughs> the, the point is that, and this is from an architectural point of view and a historic preservation point of view, <clears throat> the strength is in your two existing buildings and how well you've sh already shown them to be interpreted towards their character. So this new addition, in my view, one point of view, it should be subtle to those primary buildings, which are your primary assets. And it could be so minimally done that you almost didn't notice it, but when you did, you realized how supportive it was, how skillful it was done to support your primary buildings. I think a separate statement that goes too far here takes away from your primary buildings. And that's all I have to say on that. I would have, I would have to show you Any other comments? No, I absolutely agree. Right, I absolutely agree. agree. I, I don't, do you think we're, I guess you can I specifically ask this, do you think sure. we're getting there here? Or do you, do I you don't. Know? Personally, my quick read on this, too much glass, too, too far. Much glass? Yeah, too much The glass, the, the big vertical shafts of glass. I At first, I didn't I saw on your plan how you had a lot of glass on the sides of the stairwells. And, I, and then when I saw this, I realized you're trying to ghost the stairwells in behind yeah. it in a transparent condition. Well, the university does it in a way yeah. where you, which, you is pretty, like, which is pretty cool, but does it help your whole quality of your building's identity, in fact? Because that will be a strong identity of a functional, almost like you said yourself, it almost imply another building that is not this one. Uh, How much yeah. different? So I think there's the colors that you're painting on the exterior. How much darker is the addition plan to be than the? No, I mean they're, they're very. They're both in the gray family, but I would call it more um, three stories, a little bit more beige, but they're not. Because okay. this shows great contrast, which I think just to show which it, doesn't help. 
the presentation. To, to go on, they don't have a color palette. On yeah, exactly. Even yeah. though I, even though he had quite a set of color palettes, they had like twenty six. They did this, 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 this <clears> Those little really windows. But but to, to to the point that I think we're all talking about later, when we read these drawings, um, it's hard. it would be possibly uh, good if this addition, you know, fell right into the six story building's vocabulary. Uh, at the height of it, brings it there. Maybe the windows uh, would be smaller, or uh, you could do a steel grid, depending upon what you're going to put into the addition windows here. Um, the addition windows are they going? To, they're not going to have the mountains that you show on your three-story building, are they? No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. They do. I'm sorry. They they do. Let's so, get some other comments from some other board well, members. Well, let me just finish this okay. point. I'm sorry, Don. No. The uh, you might take some of the uh, grid work. And use that vocabulary in the window slit, maybe in a less way than a full sheet of glass that these drawings imply. Okay. You know, enough said. Sorry. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, it, it's a good dialogue with your designers. Yeah. Others? No other, no other comments at this point. I'm interested in the, uh, the actual plan of the landscape. That a little bit. It, it, I see that you have three different small parking areas. Mm -hmm. I think. Well, it's really, it's really two different parking areas. If I can just clarify this. So you have parking on off of your boulevard, okay. a little, uh, three, three spots. spaces. Yeah. Right. Then you have you know, five six, spaces here. Reduce down to five, five spaces on that parallelogram. And then the city is uh, coordinating with us to allow four parking spots in the right way. So that will be on our property. That will be in the city right way. I see. Similar okay. like Castle Bay River Westbound, where they did right. that. Right. Um, right. They done some water streets. Okay. Um, how does this relate to the number of? From a parking area standpoint? Yeah. Oh, it's not even close. Uh, yeah, that's that's the issue with the site. But we we um, we received that approval of the CDA. Okay. Um, for the parking areas. You've got a variance. Yeah. Do you have that already? That's already done. Okay. 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 But yeah, I mean, that's, that's the challenge. Like. So how are you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. How, how, do you, how do you plan to handle your parking? Well, I mean, quite, quite, quite honestly, I mean, most people... Are going to have cars? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think we're, we're on the bus line. We're on the bike yeah. line. Oh, yeah. I think that's that sort of speaks to the project. And, um, you know... What's the price point of these apartments, do you know? Uh, on average, it's going to be $1,000 a month, but it's going to be, we're going to have, uh, let's see... 20% at 65% of AMI, which will be here around 800 bucks a month. You'll have some uh, below that amount at 50% of AMI. You'll have some at okay. 80, I mean, on average, it'll be yeah. 80% of AMI. So that's, that average will be about $1,000 a month. But you'll have it above, below. A little bit, yeah. So it, it's, it's affordable for, for the program that's being put out there. Yeah. I think it's probably more fair to call it big state mm -hmm. So your, your program defines the amount of uh, 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 your rates? The program defines the rates with some some. The federal government will right. whatever they come right. out with. The, right, the, uh, right. As the guidelines. Right. 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 I, I think there, there is parking in the, in the vicinity. Unfortunately, it's owned by the developers, which right. I don't know if it would be helpful. Um, but that's okay. I, mean, I, I think that's, that's kind of the yeah. spirit of what this project is. It's, it's micro, micro building, right? You're on the bus line and the bike line. Yeah. Right. All oh, it's great. Be great. It's terrific. Yeah. Terrific. Wait, so, what's your timeline on this? Well, in a perfect world, I, I'm going to share it my aggressively. I'd love to start construction by the first. Okay. Um, and what's our process? Well, what I was going to so this is a project site review, mm. um, and this it, is the project site review. This is a project site review, but you are still oh. in the midst of um, conversation with the state preservation office, right, for your part two. Okay. So, have you submitted your part two at this point, no. or okay? Um, so, so I think the it, developer come back. When uh, they well, so what what happens is that if generally the the board recommends. Approval with some caveats. That's fine. I can. That can be the, you know, the the comment that would be sent to zoning. What will happen is if you have to, based on SHPO comments, if you need to adjust your design, there'll be a modification to the project site review, and it'll come back to the board for, for comment. Okay. So it, this is not, this is not the final. 
the the final if there are going to be um, if, if there's going to, if you anticipate some more conversations with uh, the the state preservation office about the design of the addition and that with kind of that thing. let so. me make a statement to see if the board agrees that uh, in general the board is in support of this project subject to some further discussion about the six-story addition mm -hmm. as well as any comments uh, that would need to be re-reviewed by us that might come from Shippel. Yeah. Is that acceptable as a comment? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Definitely in support of the project. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. You support. really hit this head on. <laughs> yeah. Got that proofed. So if you can that find was, that truck on the site, let me know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Some of those cars are pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one question I did have, do you believe that this was originally painted? The brick? Yeah. You think so? Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, the colors that have been scraped back to, I mean, during that period, I think it was painted. Uh, whether you can go back originally to its original yeah, that's storage, no. I don't and, know. It, and it's very difficult to remove. What's the oh, date? It's a, yeah. What's the date of this impossible. original construction? The original mm -hmm. building. Uh, 1890. Yeah, okay, so it's, it's uh, so the earliest 1860s. Okay, 1860s. So, so the earliest buildings would not have had the signs painted this way. That came right. in the profusion of signs. And I, I, you know, what I mean, on the canal, it was a very service kind of building. Right. It's a storage building. Uh, and it would have begun once they started selling out of it, which I don't know when that was, you know. Then the signs became poured all along the canals and all along the river. I would imagine the painting took place around Smith Restaurant Supply, if not Super. Well, yeah, probably probably could have been late. 50s. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, I know, I'm, like these signs would have come, obviously, way early. Way early. Way yeah. early. Mm -hmm. well, these trucks are. And the names are, the names are indicative yeah. two of it, right? The, the, the Smith Restaurant Supply Company. Yeah, sure. Those names weren't used. Well, you, you look know, at, at, you look at the names point. in the windows and stuff. Let me see that before you do. It's uh, all right. So our comment then, with the board's approval, is that we're in general support of the project. Uh, we do want to have the developer further look at some of the comments we made about the six-story addition. And then, of course, a re-review subject to that and whatever Shippo may say. Uh, the only other thing I want to say is the, the billboard you have on the roof. Um, um, do you know if that's allowed? Do you know if that's allowed? Well, I think, I think it came up in our pre-development. There is okay. no record of the, sign, uh, the, the billboard Good. sign. There. <laughs> uh, shocking. 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 Let's look into that. Usual suspects. Do you see me shaking my head? None. The signs there. Um, <laughs> We were going to try and make an effort to use as an off-premise sign, uh, so that you'll see that application come through and stay in its existing form. Yeah. So it would just stay the way it is. Um, the Smith Restaurant Supply signage that you see on the north side of the building, there is signage on the building which right. we intend to keep, which you see in the elevations, and then there's that uh, I forget the, the hanging sign. Right. That's hanging. Around, that we'd like to keep that too. Now I'm not sure what the Smith Restaurant Supply is moving here at Boulevard. Um, you know, if, if what signage they're going to take with them. Where are they moving exactly? Empire Plaza? Which I believe is. Where are you? Oh, on the west. It's on, on the west. West, yeah. west Erie East. Or yeah. east. east. It's over by like um, Nature Town. Oh, oh, over there. Oh, oh, over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that plaza. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still east. <coughs> it's east. Yeah, yeah, that is east. Yeah, I was thinking it was by Empire. Well, great. So we'd like to keep as much of that as yeah. possible. If, if that's left, we're going to keep as much as we can. Uh, the billboard sign will keep it the way it is. Uh, if we can use it as off-premises, we're going to make that application for it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good luck. Thank you so much. Yeah. So when you, when you want to see me again, just so I can manage this part of the process, should I, after I, after I get Shippo's approval, should I schedule to come back on here? Well, well I think uh, what idea. will be the trigger also, will be yeah. through zoning. Okay. Through zoning, because what you'll have to do is, is it, 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 zoning and planning commission or whomever will be approving the, this. Right. And then, if there are modifications to this based on Shippo comments, which it sounds as though there there will be some tweaking, then you'll have to resubmit those those uh, those so modifications. These, these were the tweaks on the expansion. These were some of the tweaks that Shippo brought okay. to us. Um, I'm I'm a little, you know, we haven't fully bid this out from a construction standpoint. So I think there's that's, so, so I think this is this yeah. is what Shippo asked for to to a, a certain extent. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's see what they say. Okay. And. Also, if you would bring your 
your decision on your color palette with you when yeah. you come back. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we're, we're, we'll figure yeah. out one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks so, so much. John? Yes. I'd like to confirm this will come back to us again. Yes. Right? Yeah. Does anyone have any reaction to Smith Restaurant Supply um, all around the building? That will be on Towson Street and Water Street on a three story building only. It won't, make, it won't find its way on your boulevard because we don't have any photographic evidence that was the case. Right. This, I have a reaction. Go ahead. Repeated as many times as it is, I find it excessive. Even though it's this is not Smith Restaurants even though it's, anymore. Even though it's something to do with its past image, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, it's understandable. To me, the number of times and so forth on two, on two sides of the building, I think that's excessive. We're all okay. That's my reaction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll see you. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Do you yeah. Uh, this would probably be good for the record. It, it, it may hang on to that. That would be good. Okay. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Do you mind if I take the, the one masonry sample back? No. Oh, yeah. oh, yep. Take that. Yep. Uh, thank you. I appreciate yep. it. Yep. All right. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Good thank luck. you. Thank you. It's good luck with your project. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Moving on to discussion <coughs> phase. Housing vision. Demolition of the carriage house at 1540 East Genesee Street. Uh, I think I'll speak for Tom, Bob, and myself. We spoke a little bit at the site. Uh, we don't think it needs to go any further. Uh, we certainly would like complete photo documentation, especially of the exterior, before any demolition takes place. And if I understand if that's the board's position, then we're done, correct? Let me just expand on that, Don. Sorry okay, about sure. that. Um, very simply, um, the previous submittals that were put in, did they show the structural in, uh, damage, didn't they? Did They did not. Well, we only had, uh, uh, that's the value of actually going on site and taking a look. I know. Um, and because we, the uh, photographs can only show no, and we. Much. Well, yeah. my point was that even though I saw it and I walked through it and I went upstairs and saw the holes in the roof and the fact it had been vacant for 30 plus years and some cracks in the foundations, that building could st probably still be patched and pulled together mm -hmm. as like any yeah. major effort. So I just, I, I, it's a substantial masonry building uh, that has some character. I think it would be a very expensive project um, to to rehab, but we did find something. I just wanted the board to know that it it, it, it is retrievable with a great effort. What about the what else is important here? How important the history on this particular building? Do we know any more about the history of this carriage house relative to this particular building? Before you go there, Bob, they did say they had a, a professional evaluation of the structure. Right. Have we I ever thought, seen it? I think we have. Yeah, we, I think we did see that. Uh, uh, it was a couple. I think it was years ago. a couple years, years, ago, ago, years ago, and it was um, when they uh, the evaluation was a couple years ago, and we had looked at, or the board had looked at it last year when it came through. Um, uh, from an, yeah, it was an engineer's right. Report. It was an engineer's report, and. Not that it's available. I mean, what yeah, oh, actually, uh, yeah. Do you still hold have on. it? Here it is. Yeah. I have it. <clears throat> Additionally, and this <laughs> isn't directly in our purview, yeah, but the uh, main structure, the house, had a very, very sizable addition at some point put on the rear, That's which makes this building inaccessible. That's Other that than just thought. plain storage. <laughs> yeah, it's jammed right up against it's the back jammed, of the building. I mean, it's jammed right up against the building. It's about six feet or less. Tom? I had the same impression, quite apart from, this, from the condition of the building, the current location, the way it, with as little space as is available between this building and the house itself, unless they took down the whole addition, <laughs> yeah. what could you use it for? Well, I mean, it, it looks, it, to me, it looks it's slightly right. ridiculous. Yeah. Hold the outside. Uh, basically, you can't get into the carriage house anymore. That's no. what I thought. The, no. the arches, as you see, is only six feet. There's no way you, you can get carriage. in by walking. You couldn't, you couldn't get a carriage in. You couldn't no. get a car in. Nothing would go in. No. no. You couldn't get a little tractor. You could get people in. That's it. Well, John Deere. Right. This Maybe. Is they got a cat in there. <laughs> Pardon? They got a cat in there. Yeah. Oh. It's right here. Oh, in the oh, yeah, I see. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> so it's up to the board. Yep. Sorry. Oh, Here, so I, it back. <laughs> I would like to move that we approve the demolition of this building. Is do we need a motion or do we stay silent? I think we can stay. We if the if the board is that we, it, it can. Oh, uh, okay. Let's see. I think I that the recommendation is no, that it not move. that that the demolition be allowed to move forward. I think that that's that 
think that would that's be the sufficient. motion. I think that that's sufficient. Okay. Yeah. So you're making motion that the demolition be allowed to move forward. Do we have a second on that? I'll second it. You'll second. Any discussion on that? You should include the documentation. Oh, yeah. definitely. The Photo documentation. documentation. Right. Yep. And history. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Okay, the last two things, and then I'll let us go here, is uh, one, um, as I mentioned earlier, I am going to uh, work with Kate, and we are going to get a training session together. We'll start maybe getting a doodle poll out and find out when. It's not going to be in the next month or so, but probably in the next two months. Um, and what I would like to do is try to, you know, it's something that the ordinance requires us all as members of the board to attend, and uh, hopefully we can get that together on a date we can all attend and I see it being three or four hours I see it being a half a day okay. uh, secondly uh, I just want to uh, frame this correctly what we did with the temple in terms of designating the entire property where we are right now is it'll go to the Planning Commission the Planning Commission uh, we we're not sure if they have the ability to modify uh, our designation if they so choose or if they just send it back to us uh, Subject to what they do if it goes to the Common Council the Common Council currently uh, would have the option of Sending it back to us uh, According to Corporation Council modifying it or just rejecting the entire application So that is where we're sitting here. Mm -hmm. So I just want everybody to stay aware and I'm still waiting for a couple of clarifications on some of this process from the uh -huh. uh, uh, common council's point or from the uh, corporation Corporate, council's point of yep, view. Yep, yep, and I'll right. I will get back to everyone on that. All right. Good. So that's where so, we're and and just so you know, the um, the planning commission will the, uh, the the sorry the public hearing will be authorized this coming Monday for March the sixteenth. Mm -hmm. March sixteenth will be the the planning commission's review of the Temple Concord. Okay. Um, uh, designation petition petition for designation that's that's interesting that's a public hearing yes so that will be a public uh, hearing they will mm -hmm. probably get a very good support oh, yeah. from the community and um, for designation as it was written um, and well, you uh, get some opposition yeah. to it as it was written well I think I, I think uh, you'll see you'll see probably uh, the same thing to what we saw saw, right. uh, saw here that there's uh, no one spoke against the designation of of, of the, the temple itself, of the yeah. temple of the of and the again, sanctuary. what I want to make everybody aware of is yeah. uh, the common council. No matter what we decided to designate, the whole thing, just the temple, whatever, always has the option of just rejecting the whole thing. Uh, so that is which they've done before. Which they've which done they've done before. before. Um, and can I just before everyone breaks, I did want to bring to your attention the statewide conference that's going to be held here in Syracuse at the end of next month. And as board members, uh, you can apply um, and get your registration fee waived. It's a great opportunity. Um, there are also other scholarships that are out there for, um, they're, they're trying to in, increase the diversity of, of um, participation in the conference and obviously in preservation in general. So um, they're looking for everyone to be able to attend um, and this is the same sponsor that we attended an event many of us attended an earlier uh, training with them um, no no this is um, this is not th no this is the the this is the statewide conference that's put on by the landmark oh, society right. and that's right I apologize. that training that we went to was um, a CLG this training is, right uh, yeah that was uh, right. A, right. I mean they're all sponsor you know right. Spencer's it's all so similar people but um, this is a much wider ranging Kate conference. I did have a question I don't know if you know this but like many conventions it appears that on any given day uh, let's say black one all these things are going on concurrently yes so you kind of got to pick and choose what you, you do have to, to pick and choose yep so the reason I mentioned that is if there are other people who are going to sign up for this can you please let Kate know and maybe we can sit down among ourselves and see which ones this board would really want to have uh, feedback on and maybe we can have one person go to one one person go to another yeah so. that'd be great I also want to point out that March 12th 
is oh, the yeah. county uh, seminar or museum or whatever you call Pla it. Planning, planning at the uh, uh, Hotel planning Syracuse. Federation. And it uh, does cover the uh, continuing education requirement for board members such as us, which is mostly observed by ignoring the requirement. <laughs> OK, anything else? Motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Just to let Thank you know. All right, let me go to one of my going to sleep. <laughs> so you're not going to go? Hey, baby. Of course. Didn't you go back to sleep? That was my day. Who? I, I have think been to the hotel. That my day. So I do. Which, which one? This one? Yeah. I don't know, I don't know yet. Sorry. <clears throat> I don't know.